What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Please follow my Instagram at Russo Lifts just in case something happens to this YouTube channel. You can follow, message, and you can watch my daily story content on Instagram. I'll see you there. Here is the recovery COVID physique update for everyone. So I've been off 677 for a couple days now. The water weight is finally coming off. Obviously still fat, weighed in at 248. Fasted, no food, no water after a big shit. So legitimate 248. And you know, my water retention is going down. You can see my face is sunken in a lot since you know, everyone was calling me bloated as fuck because I'm the goat of bloat. But I did get a bit of gyno from doing that crazy high dosage 677. So I don't know if I'm gonna be going with raloxifene or if I'm just gonna say fuck it, keep my titties and then get surgery. But you know, this is how I'm looking. My waist is definitely tightening up. You know, this is me like relaxed. This is me like really sucking in. So for 248, you know, it's decent. All right, now that you guys have seen how fat I am, going to be training arms and medial delts. I might do some pressing. I did chest yesterday, so my pressing is not gonna be, you know, the greatest. Two Gatorade Zeros, Gorilla Mine Glycerol Powder. I'm just gonna add some on top of the glycerol powder already in. Gorilla Mode. Favorite pre-workout, grillmo.com, coupon Russo, there's the plug. You can just compare the ingredient profile of two scoops to other companies. I don't really gotta advertise this one. It advertises itself with the formula if you know what to look for. I'm just gonna do a scoop and like, you know, a little bit more. I don't need a ton. And then Pedialyte Sport. Gonna be getting some sodium in to hold more water nitrogen retention during the workout. And that is the pre-workout major key being stacked with Pedialyte. I switched outfits like three times in this video. But on this one arm day, I just wanna make my pump. I need to off the drive in this. Tacoma traffic. Being from Pittsburgh, man, the population difference is being pretty crazy coming from the suburbs of Pittsburgh to this Tacoma, Seattle stuff. That's probably one of my biggest issues is I just, the drivers here, man, they just, it's like Mario Kart. Like I witness accidents every day here. Every time I go out, I see an accident. When I was in Pittsburgh, I see an accident like, every one and a half weeks. Here's every day and I've seen like 
10 car pileups here. Like, no one knows how to drive. It doesn't even snow here either. So it's just been a bit of a culture shock with that. up everyone it's russo i hope everyone is doing well and everyone is having a good week bringing you back to la fitness this time in tacoma washington not pittsburgh pa for a shorter and arm workout now i said i wasn't going to press but i got my new wrist wraps in the mail i got the um small gangster wraps by slingshot and i got the the um, longer ones for like if I'm gonna max out and yeah I love the gangster wraps I'm not sponsored or affiliated they did give me free products to do the generation iron documentary but you know I definitely love my wraps and they were stolen out of my bag and it feels real good to have quality wrist wraps again so I wanted to try them out now this is kind of kind of really stupid considering yesterday I did incline volume with 280 and i did incline volume with 125 pound dumbbells after so my triceps and front delts are completely taxed from yesterday and here i am being a genius trying to hit the 125s on shoulder press the most i've ever gotten these four i think is four or five reps and yeah you can you can see how it goes I did have an assistant assistance when I did four four reps. Um, I had someone help me on the first rep, but I got Uno one rep with the 125s. But reps felt great, man. I felt super stable in my wrist, and I just wanted some heavy, heavy load to feel on these wrist wraps. And man, I felt good, honestly. I didn't really, you know, notice too much that you know. Obviously, my front delts and triceps were taxed i did notice after i did all this volume <laughs> but anyways going into the cycle i have just been you know just pinning as little tests as possible i'm trying to lose weight anytime i up the androgens i cannot lose weight i start gaining weight and like i said mk677 i had it in there for so long because it was i was at such a crappy starting point trying to rebuild this physique because I went to 165 milligrams of test while at my heaviest, right? I should have gotten the fat off and then tapered down the dosage. So when I went off, my metabolism got completely crashed and I had no insulin sensitivity. And then like when I was training, when I first got to Washington, like I could barely recover without 677. 677 was the only way it was letting me get back to my normal amount of training volume. And, you know, I, I just had to deal with water weight for a bit. And that water weight stacked on the fat that, you know, I, I'm already am fat. So it stacked on top. So, 
yeah, finally, you know, my muscles are holding glycogen again. You can see that they're holding glycogen again and everything is looking back to normal finally. And I've dropped the MK677 and I'm recovering fine now. My muscles are used to being trained again and are almost to the original amount of volume. Like I haven't, I'm not dumb. I'm not trying to injure myself. I slowly slowly ramping it back up to where i was during that injectable lgd cycle that injectable lgd cycle was probably some of the most insane weekly volume i've ever done personally and that was obviously i had to diet to back that amount of volume but yeah i'm just slowly trying to get back up to doing that amount of volume i don't want to like overwork and then overtrain. although i'm not the biggest you know proponent of everyone is overtraining, but there is a point where you're just not like you're just causing more damage. You can't stimulate. Don't absolutely fucking annihilate, right? Stimulate. Don't absolutely annihilate. That's kind of my thing. You can annihilate every once in a while, but if I, you know, take a hiatus, went off cycle, crashed my metabolism, I'm not going to do the same amount of training volume. So, current cycle has been around 200 tests a week again i sometimes forget the pin and then sporadic s23 pre-workout for maybe like once or twice a week just on legs mostly and then my diet is very very heavy carb cycling right now so i have two to three low carb days and then on legs i try and refeed my body a bit to prepare my central nervous system to get taxed by all that heavy weight I've been slowly rebuilding my squat. My squat is almost at, you know, 405 for sets again. When I got here, you know, it was a struggle just doing 405 for one set. So trying to rebuild my strength while getting this fat off, you know, it's it's a tricky thing, but it's it's working out. You know, I just needed to get back to the weights I was doing. You know, I don't really care about reaching my peak strength because I was the crazy strong before COVID. So I'm not going to try and get back there. I'm definitely more fixated on just getting the fat off and getting closer to a contest weight nowadays. But you know, my training volume and weights I'm moving is pretty adequate and similar to what it was before all that shit went down. So that's, that's what I have to say about it. I haven't really been you know, keeping consistent with my pinning, which is not smart at all, which means I'm having fluctuations, but I just don't want to pin too much and then not be able to lose weight. Anytime I up the androgens, it just becomes more difficult for me to lose weight. As far as fat burners go, I've been doing injectable L-carnitine. I've been doing 600 milligrams IM on my big cardio days. And I've been doing the Gorilla Mode PM fat burner, which is a bunch of natural fat burners that's non-stimulant. I am going to review the Rolla sign, which is the Yohimbine with no side effects. I was taking that a couple of times, but personally have dropped it out of the fat loss stack to be completely honest, because I don't, I still feel the sides personally. I'm real sensitive to Yohimbine and the L-carnitine has been working. It's, it's night and day. I definitely feel like my cardio sessions count a lot more and also rubbing on muscle gels fire as well but that's how i'm currently looking at 248 in the morning there's a nice pose for you guys hope everyone's well Workout meal, steak and rice, ghosty approves. And first, before my post workout meal, even though that is on someone's mind over here, got myself a package. So, if you guys have been following me, I bought some clothes. If you guys have been following me on Instagram, at Russo Lifts, appreciate everyone who follows me on there. I hit 22,000 followers. Seriously, thank you to everyone who's followed. I've been posting daily story content on there. I know I've been kind of absent on YouTube 
wanted to wait so I felt mentally better to vlog and create again and like not like I don't want to go through all this effort to create a video and at the end I'm like I don't really like the energy I put on this video I don't like the video at all you know the Instagram story is much easier and I'm less censored on there as well but if you guys have been following the story you'll know I almost ate shit squatting 405 from my sets a couple days ago so I finally pulled the trigger and got some, wow, they're pink, huh, they're, they're way, I'm just making sure it's not the blue light glasses, but I guess, I guess I got pink, this is like a hot, man, I don't know, they, these look scarlet on the website, but I guess I got some pink Nike Romalias, size, size 12, so, Hopefully this heeled shoe helps me. I really have been trying to lift in the no bull trainers I have. I have no bull shoes. And I wanted to do legs and nose. I thought those were gonna be my main leg day driver shoes. And it's just like, the heel is not there. Like I want something where I can sit back and this has that nice heel. And these are kind of like Olympic shoes. I would say they're full blown Olympic shoes, but I'm going to give them a shot and tell you how it goes. So that's what's up with me, gym gear wise. And then you guys saw my new straps, or I mean, not my new strap, my new wraps by Slingshot. But yeah, I just wanted to update everyone on what's been going on while I've been absent. So, you know, I just, it's just my life has been mentally a roller coaster this past um, two years, basically, you know. It really, really took a lot on my mind to go off. Basically, I didn't go off cycle, but I went to 165 milligrams of test and then didn't lift during that quarantine. And it was in my parents' house and I wasn't sleeping at all and just watched my physique completely disappear. You know, that, that was a lot mentally. My muscle dysmorphia really kicked in when I was, you know, the same weight I am now, just completely fat, right? Not, can't see, I couldn't see any muscle separation, I couldn't see anything, didn't even look like I picked up a weight in my life. And you know, I'm slowly getting back there and I'm cutting, right? I wanna complete, compete in classic physique and the stage weight is 205, so I'm trying to creep down and look good at 220 and then, you know, do a prep when I'm like 228, 225, you know? I'm pretty fat still right now, but I thought the water weight would come off faster since of co since COVID. It's um, being hard. It's been hard because the saunas are not open at LA Fitness. If I had the sauna, this would be a way faster thing to get the MK677 water weight off. You good? He doesn't like to sneeze. Come here. Come here. You good? But yeah, that's that's what's in the pipeline. But really, like, I just want to be on my cell phone camera again. I don't... I really got into that groove of, like, just being too robotic. I think, you know, moving forward, I really want to incorporate more daily vlog content, more, like interaction content with me and other people versus just you know solo me but this brings me to my next point and it's like he's just this bone was massive when i first got it and now it's like a chicken nugget come here but anyways you know this YouTube channel has been my dream to scale this YouTube channel and if you guys have been following all my YouTube channels you know it's been quite you know an up and down thing with YouTube and dealing with all that and you know now I'm in this position even though like mentally I wasn't really ready to create but you know I have 26,000 subscribers I appreciate every single one and you know I think I can scale it I think I have you know much better content or potential for much better content. I know my content has sucked recently, but I think I have potential to be a much bigger channel. And 
just how I get there in today's current algorithm, I don't know if I want to go that route. Like, when I look at the fitness channels that are scaling the fastest, what are they doing? They are clout mentioning, clout dropping, reaction videos, natty or not, you know, breaking down cycles or breaking down side effects of other people who have followings and, you know, that is the current um, way to scale YouTube channel the fastest. I've personally had videos where I've kind of done that route and they've done way better than like, say a really hardcore informational video that I like or a really good vlog that I like. You know, they just don't get the same amount of traction. And really, I just need to generate traction to have a bigger sub base to do my original content creation. But it, it's just like, would you guys support that? Would you guys be down if I went that route with this channel? Or would I get like a, an extreme, you know, like, what are you doing, Russo? You're selling out. You're, you're playing the YouTube. This is hydrogen water, by the way. I've been trying out hydrogen water recently. Can't tell you if it's placebo or not, but I've been you know, comparing hydrogen water versus um, alkaline water. But would you guys like be against that? What are your thoughts on, you know, how to scale this channel bigger? Because obviously I'm gonna document my contest. I already picked the coach. I reached out to him, asked him if he still had open slots. He says he's willing to do me. I just have to get some bloods done. And like I said, in the voiceover of the workout, you know, I've currently just been detoxing and now I've been forgetting to pin and just like, just cruising along, trying to get this weight off. Honestly, if I add in androgens, I'm probably just going to like, it's going to be harder for me to lose weight and I'm already 248. I don't want to get any heavier. I want to get smaller so I can make classic physique because I do have a little bone structure. Not a big bone structure for bodybuilding, so in my opinion, classic's much better suited. So, yeah, I need to get smaller, but I'm gonna document that. It's gonna be completely unbiased. The cycle will be revealed, the whole shebang, how I feel like, the whole contest, all the mental ups and downs of that. I'm so excited, I'm so ready to do a show. I'm just ready for that, you know, just the whole experience, right? I don't really care how I do at the show. I just want to go through that experience. And really, I just want to do a show so I can rebound, oh my so I can rebound off my show, right? When you do a show, you're at the lowest body fat, your body's starving for nutrients, and then I would hit a nice cycle after, get a crazy rebound effect, make a ton more gains than say, like how my insulin sensitivity is kind of fucked up right now. I'm fat right now. like. If I did a show, it is the thing to do. But yeah, the rebound would be, you know, a very fun cycle. I could do a nice big masking rebound after. It would be, you know, it would be something that you guys, I think, would definitely enjoy the contest and then the aftermath of the contest. Me, you know, filling back out, filling back up and making more results off the rebound with the cycle. And then, yeah, I could go from there. I don't know if I would compete again after that, but it would definitely be a learning experience. And I think I could place at a local MPC show, depending on who showed up. So yeah, that is my thoughts with that. Um, but that's down the pipeline, right? I'm still gonna cut. It's probably gonna be closer to next year. Not really planning on doing that right off the bat because I'm so heavy. I don't want to stress my body out and get down to 225-ish too quickly. I want to do it, you know, progressively and not like freak my body out to get to 220 and then have to make a 205 stage weight. Like I want to slowly creep down, get all the fat off and then could do a hardcore prep after I've been there for a while and my metabolism's recovered and everything. So that's the goal with that, but overall like how do you suggest I scale this channel? What do you guys want to see the most? What do you think would be the best, you know, method of attack for scaling this channel? Obviously, I need to upload more consistently. I'm going to be doing that. Obviously, you want content that I normally make, going to do that. But as far as bringing in like a bigger, you know, part of fitness YouTube in general, 
versus just the hardcore niche that I'm currently in. I think it's time that I expand out because it's not sustainable really with the content that I do to solely try and grow off of that. So I'm really just looking for feedback on this video. I'm looking for feedback on this vlog. <clears throat> just personally, you know, I feel a lot better. Than, but yeah, I feel a lot better mentally. I just wanted to thank everyone who stuck with me over these past couple of months, you know. Looking back on all that, it was just, I just buried, focused on work, my moves, could barely sleep, just, just a, just a horrible grind. And, you know, I really ignored everything, ignored my mental health, don't ignore your mental health, and, and definitely take time and chill out and relax, you know. I have like a workaholic mindset by this point and I've been slowly trying to get a schedule to where I don't burn out and you know I figured it out and I'm looking forward to bringing the team on and having a team around me I think that will help a lot with me personally at this point I'm at that level where you know it'd really really be nice to take some shit off my back so took on too many jobs at once I was doing so many things for so many different people so Narrowing it all down, I just want to thank everyone who stuck with me and you know, I, I know a lot of people want to see me win and a lot of people want to see me lose and you know, I just thank you for both of those types of people for you know, putting that pressure on me because that got me out of it, honestly and you know, I feel a lot better now looking back, I just, I can't, can't believe how I felt every day and I just don't want anyone to suffer through that so if you are I feel for you, and I'll see you in my next one.